Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us for this week's Lunchtime Chats with Quinky and Haida. This week, we're here to talk about our tribal enterprises. My name is Chakya E. Richard Peterson, and I serve as the president of Quinky and Haida. Again, we uh, have been bringing these Lunchtime Chats as an opportunity for our tribal citizens to learn about the programs and, and enterprises of the tribe and how those uh, work to benefit our tribal citizens. Again, this week, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this week's lunchtime chat will share information on what tribal enterprises are. Uh, we used to refer to them as our social enterprises. We'll introduce you to our businesses and discuss how these enterprises are part of the tribe's overall goal to achieve economic poverty so that we can ultimately meet our tribal citizens where they're at. So if we can, I'd like you guys to introduce yourselves. We'll start with Will. Thank you, President Peterson, and good afternoon, everybody. My name is Will Ware. I'm the Chief Development Officer for Clinkin and Haida. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Jody Gaddy. I'm the Tribal Enterprise Manager. Cal? Hi, everybody. My name is Cal Olson. I'm the Sacred Shine uh, Auto Details Lead Detailer. Great. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you taking time to introduce yourselves. You know, uh, through the work of our business and economic development department, we've been standing up several new businesses in the last few years. These businesses not only have a financial bottom line of generating unrestricted revenue for the tribe, they're also making a socioeconomic impact. Will, can you talk about what a tribal enterprise is? Yes, thank you, President Peterson. So a tribal enterprises is a business that is operated by the tribe. Um, we have uh, chosen to form these enterprises that you have listed here as, as enterprises of Clinkin and Haida, as opposed to a standalone business uh, that you would see uh, many other organizations uh, stand up and, and create a, a state chartered corporation or the likes. Uh, Clinkin and Haida under federal law is allowed to form enterprises that are formed under the ordinances of our tribe. Um, this really is a, a true expression and an exercise of, of, of tribal sovereignty. And, uh, and so we are proud to exercise that and it gives us a, a number of benefits, uh, some, some tax benefits, but more so it really provides us an opportunity as you've already just mentioned to, to really help us meet our, our tribal citizens where they're at, not just by providing you know, a livable wage um, to our tribal citizens, but it also allows us to generate revenues uh, via our profits of these, these enterprises to go back into the services that the tribe provides. And um, second of all, it, it also allows us to provide training opportunities and, and uh, professional development of our employees. Great. You know, one of the first tribal enterprises was the Elizabeth Karadovich Hall. And, you know, we've put a lot of work into remodeling it. And it's become, I think, one of the um, best indoor venues with state-of-the-art sound and lighting equipment. But, you know, as we all know, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we've had to keep the hall closed to renters for quite a while to prevent large gatherings. Jody, can you talk to us a little bit about what the latest local um, COVID-19 mandate, as well as CDC guidance. Just explain to us a little bit about um, where the Elizabeth Pradovich Hall is at right now in terms of making it available as a rental to the public again. Yeah, uh, thank you, President Peterson. I'm, I'm proud to say that we're currently open for new events. We're confident that we could offer a venue that's safe for both our guests and our employees right now. And that's been really important to us and tribal leadership throughout the, the pandemic. So we shut down for, for quite some time and uh, we're feeling really confident with the current risk level being so low in Juneau um, and the vaccination rates increasing every day. Um, you know, we've just been asking clients to submit their COVID mitigation plans specific for the, their event. For example, some folks recently had an event where they, they uh, asked folks to submit their vaccination cards and that was specific to their event. So the client wanted that for their event. So there's things that we can accommodate 
specific to your events right now that are safe and make you all feel comfortable. Uh, so just give us a call at 463-7777 to get the booking process started. Hey, I, I love how we're able to be flexible to meet the needs of clients. I think our staff really go above and beyond in that. And I think, you know, I had a meeting yesterday with the local president of the Chamber of Commerce and just had glowing things to say about our staff there and how uh, they keep being creative in solutions. And so I think that's a testament to you, Jody, and, and your leadership there. I'm really happy to hear those kind of things. You know, one of the, the best things that we did, uh, I think, added to enhance the Elizabeth Bradovich Hall as um, a destination rental space, too, is adding smokehouse catering as an on-site catering option for our rentals. Yodi, can you share some information on smokehouse catering and how it's currently meeting the internal food service needs of Pink and Haida's department, as well as our other tribal enterprises? Yeah, of course. Um, to, so to view our full menu, you can go to smokehousecateringak.com and click on the menu tab. Um, and we're, we're really proud to offer quality catered food to our tribal departments, um, as well as breakfast and lunch for our coffee shop, Sacred Grounds. Um, we provide uh, catering for a few different internal food service needs for Clinkett and Haida, tribal family youth services. Um, just recently through Office of the President for returning to work, we offered pastries for staff. Um, and then uh, tragically this week, we were providing meals for the dedicated folks who were um, part of those search efforts for one of our tribal citizens. You know, before the pandemic, Smokehouse Catering really shined as one of our most profitable enterprises. Maybe, Jody, you can talk about how the pandemic affected Smokehouse Catering and, and are, are they currently taking any event contracts? Yeah, of course. Um, we were really lucky at the beginning of the pandemic to secure a catering contract with United Way. And... We were partnering with them, along with a few other businesses who are providing meals through United Way for uh, community members in Juneau who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, we also provide meals for our Head Start locations in Juneau, as well as the, as the uh, Child Care Center Learn. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Chef Noel Ramirez and his staff, and Jerry Copeland, he's our events coordinator. Um, I really believe that we're coming out of this pandemic stronger than when we started. And that's a huge thanks to our incredible staff, you know, partnering with public radio and community organizations that are, that are really holding each other up and helping other folks get through this pandemic. So did the pandemic allow for Smokehouse Catering to operate in any creative new ways? Yeah, I mean, not only did it allow us to do so, but it forced us to do so. <laughs> so um, one thing that's really incredible about this year is that the tribe's been able to offer elders meals at their home, which is really upholding one of our most important tribal values. Um, previously, the tribe offered elders in-person lunches on Thursday, which it just wasn't safe to do that, of course, this year. Uh, TFYS has been contracting with Smokehouse Catering to provide uh, weekly lunches in 2020, and then we moved that to um, monthly meals, and they're providing sundries almost every day, I think, to elders. So it, that's, that's something that's really exciting that I saw come out of the pandemic is that we're able to offer more food options for people that need it. Um, Another thing that we've been able to do is offer drive-through pickup orders for both large and small events, and then grab-and-go dinners for the coffee shop are just a few, few other examples. All right. Smokehouse Catering has provided catering services for events held outside of Juno in the past too. Can you talk about that? And is transport catering still an option we can provide to our outlying communities? Of course, yeah, this is one of 
the more fun options is that we could pack these up and we have these large electric heated boxes that can basically be loaded up and ready to serve in another community. Uh, we did this recently um, through our partnership with United Way. We sent boxes over to Haynes for folks who were part of that search and rescue team um, during the landslide. So first responders over there and then the volunteers uh, received meals through United Way and also Smokehouse Catering through that partnership. And um, in the past few years, we've provided Indian tacos to Huna, um, and we're we're open and we we're ready to prepare meals and send them out if if people want to choose that option. You know that's great. You mentioned uh, partnering with United Way, and we really valued some of these partnerships in our community. Um, you know. One of the things that's really been important through this pandemic as well as our first responders. And I thought it was really great that uh, your crew at Smokehouse Catering was able to kind of show its appreciation to our first responders and essential health care providers in this, in this past year through food donation. Can you talk about the community support project and thoughts for future donation opportunities? Yeah, um, holding each other up is one of our core tribal values. And we do recognize that we're part of a community. And that's the really neat thing about um, having a tribal enterprise. Um, we're able to offer these, these donations through our profits. So we provided meals, over, four, over 500 meals to first responders, hospital employees, all search employees. And we're certainly open to future donation opportunities. One thing that I'm interested in providing meals for is uh, the next time those um, amazing individuals who are restoring that Lawson Creek Cemetery, um, providing a few meals for them over there. Um, also open to, to providing meals for other folks. And one thing that's on my mind in May, and I'm sure yours too, President Peterson, is the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. Uh, so any people who are working to advocate in that way and make change in those ways. So we yeah. just follow community events closely, you know, even smaller scale things like when staff members lose family members, we drop off dinners for them, things like that. You know, it's those small gestures that really make a big difference for people. And we know that, and, you know, one of our cultural values is to hold each other up and when and where we can, we always want to. And, you know, we had a really tragic loss in the community last week with an elder who, uh, you know, got lost. And, and uh, you know, even trying to just provide some meals for the searchers and the family, while it, it, it's not a huge, huge contribution, you know, um, letting people know you care, letting them know you're holding them up, I think really speaks volumes. and. I'm really proud of you and the team for upholding those tribal values and, and knowing that sometimes, you know, we gotta give a little to really mean a lot. So I always appreciate that. You know, Smokehouse Catering has also been really tied to Sacred Grounds Cafe and has helped uh, our coffee shop, our, our specifically now because of the pandemic, our, our main coffee shop, our first coffee shop at the Andrew Hill building, um, expanded food service options. As some of you know, Sacred Grounds opened its first location back in 2017 there at the Andrew Hill building in Juneau. Jody, can you share some highlights on where Sacred Grounds is at and putting well, where our um, coffee shop locations are after expanding and what operations are looking like? since the introduction of COVID-19 vaccine and relaxed restrictions? Yeah, so we have three locations. We have our downtown location, which you just mentioned, that's on Willoughby inside the Andrew Hope building. Uh, we have the location in Sea Alaska Plaza. We also have the location, our newest one, at Bartlett Regional Hospital. Um, and we've made quite a few exciting changes this past year. Uh, we've had our doors closed, but that doesn't mean we haven't been working hard in there. So we've added two amazing works of art by uh, tribal citizen artists, uh, Robert Mills and Michaela Goad. 
Uh, Michaela designed a beautiful mural that spans the whole main wall. That's a that's about a 30 foot mural across that wall. Um, Robert Mills designed and installed a one of a kind aluminum panel that spans the 16 feet across our ordering counter. So they're just hu huge, beautiful, stunning works of art in there right now. Um, so I encourage everyone to come down and visit and see those in person. We also added a plexiglass barrier and social distancing markers in there. So folks feel more comfortable and safe coming in now that our doors are back open. Um, we added some really convenient grab and go options as well. Uh, really great sandwiches, parfaits, salads, breakfast sandwiches, burritos, wraps, fruit, vegetables, and, and so on. Yeah, it's really been see, uh, great to go in there and see the hot and cold options. Uh, I don't know who's making those lumpias in there, but uh, as a purveyor of a good lumpia, I give that high mark. Those are fantastic. Really, really enjoyed them. Um, Jody, can you talk a little bit about where our um, roasted coffee comes from and what kind of discounts the Sacred Grounds offer for you know government employees? military, elders, et cetera? Yeah, so we get our coffee from Tribal Citizen in Petersburg. The name of their company is Alaska Island Coffee. They also operate a coffee shop there named Common Grounds. Uh, we offer generous discounts for elders, government employees, and military. So it's 10% for elders and government employees and 15% for military. And we also offer weekly specials um, where you can get great deals on some food and beverage items down at the coffee shop. So even if you're not part of these groups, you can still get a great deal. That's great. President Peterson, can I, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I, I just wanted to add into that with that Alaska Island coffee is that these are tribally owned citizens that, that uh, tribal citizens who owned uh, this tribally owned company that we're getting our, our coffee from here in Petersburg. Yeah, Jody mentioned that. But, uh, Jody, where can people go for a menu of all the food and beverage op options offered by Sacred Ground? Oh, we post all of our specials on Facebook, but you could also go to our website, sacredgroundsak.com, or download the Toast Takeout app. Um, it should be just in the App Store on Android or on Apple. Um, we should pop up as the only option there. Uh, our full food and drink menu is available there and conveniently you can just place your order on there and it'll be ready for pickup when you show up. Yeah, a great thing about that Toast app is, you know, once you install it on your phone, it remembers you and so like I use it and I order and then it saves like you get a um, discount for being a frequent customer and things like that. And so it's pretty cool. Um, it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, but I, I appreciate us using some of the more modern ways to, to do things and having the apps are really handy, I think. Uh, turning our attention, Sacred Shine is, is another one of our enterprises that's putting our tribal citizens to work and providing quality auto detailing services here in Juneau. Cal, you continue to do amazing work in auto detailing and making our vehicle shine. Can you share some information on Sacred Shine and how you got started in this business? Yeah, um, proud to say Sacred Shine is the first tribally owned and operated detailing service here in Juneau. I'm more than proud to say we've grown enough to operate at a higher standard and we're known for our quality service, but, and we also get to put tribal citizens to work. Um, all this started because uh, I was working downtown one day and Clinkett Height a vehicle came back and I noticed it was still dirty coming straight from a detail shop. So I offered to fix it. <clears throat> I was uh, told I couldn't unless I was a detail shop, a professional detail shop. So I started to inquire about it. And um, soon after Sacred Shine was born. And since then, we just took off and hit some tremendous growth. Um, I've been detailing now for about 10 plus years and I've literally grown to love my job. It's, it's really seeing the customers happy with the outcome that makes everything worth it. You know, I, this, this is probably one of the, um, 
things that I'm, I'm just most proud of. And I've gotten to know Cal. He was working for us down at our hall. And, and uh, every time I saw him, he would talk to me. I really think we, we should have a te- detailing business. And, you know, I, I think uh, more importantly than me listening to him is, you know, our, our former director, Emily Edenshaw, listening to him and Jody and believing in Cal and saying, you know, let's take the, the chance. And the pride and that they take in their work there is really something that I'm proud of. I, I bring my vehicle there to get detailed a couple of times a year and they just do a phenomenal job. It's the little things, even a thank you note inside there, really, really personal touches. I like that. And, you know, they go above and beyond to make sure our customers are satisfied. And I really love seeing that uh, pride that Cal and his team feel and exude because of the work they do. You know, um, I think it's just really life changing in, in some ways. And it sounds silly maybe that just a, a small business like this can do that. But I think it's changing lives for, and, and making people feel really excited about what they're accomplishing. Cal, you know, going on that, the consistency and quality of service through Sacred China has grown your customer base and you've moved to a new location since you last joined us for that. Can you tell us about your new location and any additions to your team? Yes, we moved into a much larger space uh, here on Concrete Way. It's in the Lemon Creek area. Um, It's given us the opportunity to work on more vehicles at once. And most importantly, it's it's created more jobs for tribal citizens. Right now, I got three other people working with me. One has been with me for the last couple of years, and the other two are recent hires. So I'm, and we're just starting to uh, train them up. So you and your and your team members are actively seeking exciting new training opportunities so that you can expand services. Cal, can you talk about your past and future training opportunities and what you currently provide and hopefully what we've seen providing? Yeah, uh, Glenn and I both went to a detailing seminar through Detail King out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, about a year and a half or so ago. Um, we're actually certified to do detail work, um, headlight restoration, carpet dyeing, cigarette burn repair, plastic trim restoration. We were introduced to paint correction and ceramic coating. Right now, I'm looking into more training to be certified in paint correction, ceramic coating, but also custom vinyl wrap, bed liner, undercoating, how to how to uh, fix or replace windows, and other minor stuff like oil changes and tire work. In the next five uh, five to ten year five to ten year goal. Sorry, uh, five to ten year goal is to uh, be trained and certified in, in all these services so that we could offer it to other communities, not just you know. Yeah, I really like that, Cal. You know, I think the last time we talked about this, you had talked to me about plans to establish a mobile auto detailing unit. Can you uh, give any updates on that project? Yeah, our mobile detailing trailer is ready to go. I re- we recently acquired a truck and a new water reclamation system and a water mat so that we could do our wet work on the go. The goal is to be able to go to all the smaller communities in Southeast to offer quality and affordable detailing services. I think right now we'd have to do some test runs, but I'm more than sure we're ready to extend Sacred Shine services to other communities. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, you know, we get actually asked quite a bit from folks when we're going to go do that, when we're going to serve our communities, and, and we certainly want to. One of the things we actually hope to inspire, too, is taking the mobile unit to the community is showing them that they can do it themselves, and hopefully that kind of plants the seed and, and, and they start their own local, right? And we can we'll always be happy to share information and encourage in any way we can. So we, we don't want to, you know, necessarily go into a community and, and take away for a service that somebody else provides. But if we can teach and show people how it's done, hopefully that plant succeeds, I think. So uh, really just proud of that and that you share that mentality, Cal. 
you know, one of the things that we're always doing there at Sacred Shine is offering promotional discounts for special holidays. Do you have any uh, promotional offerings coming up, Cal? Yeah, we're offering a 10% discount right now for Memorial Day, now through Memorial Day, and then shortly afterwards, we'll be doing a 20% discount for Father's Day. Awesome. We also offer uh, discounts for elders, um, uh, from military, um, for government workers and stuff like that too. Yeah, that's year round. This is just uh, this discounts we're ha having right now for, for the holidays coming up. Perfect. Well, thanks, Cal. Again, keep up the great work. I'm really proud of you and your team. Will, Thank you. Attorney, yeah. Will, turning to you, um, can you share some information on our little Eagles and Ravens nest, our Learn Child Care Center? Yeah, so shortly before the pandemic started, we opened up our Learn Center, our little Eagles and Ravens nest. And uh, we, we ex when we started it, we, and we, we're still promoting it as such as the, really the state-of-the-art child care facility in Juneau. And uh, we have a, a larger facility over uh, on the backside of the Juno Christian Center uh, over close to Fred and Myers. Uh, it's a large facility. We took on a couple of years ago and, and began to renovate and remodel and uh, came up with a large open space that we were able to build some, some temporary walls in for, for various classrooms. But uh, uh, the Learn Center, again, provides continuous updates to families throughout the day. And uh, we send pictures to the families and and families can actually just get online and, and, and able to have the software to communicate with our child care staff um, fairly quickly. And um, really proud, we have a lot of culturally appropriate curriculum that is there that, uh, that really is just emphasizing and, and getting our children or, or young people used to seeing some of the cultural sites and views through posters, but also with our staff who are very um, engrossed into our culture and, and they're able to share that with our kids. I hear all the time from parents who, who have their children now that their kids are coming back and they're, they're counting and they're singing songs in Clinkett and they're responding to their parents at, at three years old in Clinkett, you know, and, and it's exciting to hear that going on. And, and so um, I can't say enough good things about the Learn Center. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. We know that child care you know, certainly locally here in Juneau in our community, but nationally is, is such a critical piece to um, folks being able to go to work and, you know, they, they want to ensure that their children are safe and are provided for. I can tell you in my own office, several of my staff utilize the Learn Center. One of the great things that the Learn Center utilizes is technology. And so parents are actually sent pictures and, and things throughout the day of their children. And I'll have staff come in, oh, look, and show me their phone. And I think, man, what a um, peace of mind to see. But, you know, you know, you worry about your kids throughout the day and, and making sure they're happy and safe. You know, and, and one of the things that go along with happy and safe is, you know, we've been in this COVID-19 pandemic and the child, care, the child care center has been faced with some real challenges while trying to, you know, stay open, reopen. Will, can you share some information on LEARN and where we're at in terms of returning to a fully staffed and operational business? Well, absolutely. You know, in the LEARN Center, we, we have, as a child care facility, we face a lot of challenges. And yet, for the vast majority of the pandemic, we stayed open. And we stayed open for critical infrastructure um, parents uh, that were involved in our critical infrastructure of, of Juno and within the tribe. Um, and so I have to really commend Jamie Shanley and her staff over at the Learn Center for finding ways to be creative, to stay open and keep our staff and our children healthy and safe. And um, we did some significant remodels to, to the Learn Center to accommodate uh, better spacing and distancing and, and, and just safety and dropping off children and picking up our children. Um, Right now, we have uh, the capacity to be uh, approximately 60 children within our, in our, within our Learn Center. Um, right now, we're just above 50% of capacity. Um, we are shooting for a 75% capacity right now in the very near future here. We're, we're shooting for that over the next month. 
Um, we do have a waiting list. However, we're still taking names and applications for children to, to be enrolled in the Learn Center. Um, but uh, we're consistently looking for, for staff that are, that are wanting to come and work with, with our kids, with our children. And, and, um, and again, we, we, um, we are very well staffed. However, um, as we're wanting to grow with our enrollment, we're, we're needing to add on more staff as well. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Jamie Shanley. One, I, I want to congratulate her and her husband who just welcomed a new baby uh, into, into their world and uh, she's out on maternity leave. But man, um, Jamie's perseverance leadership uh, has been phenomenal in the development of our Learn Child Care Center. Um, I, I don't always get to interact with her as frequently as I'd like and probably don't give her the kudos she deserves, but man, we are so grateful to have her as a part of our team. And, you know, she's developed us into, I think a premier child care center. And, and I hear the comments from parents and I've had people contact me and they love the Learn Center. Jamie is very careful in her selection of staff of course, they have to go through rigorous background checks and all that, but background checks don't talk about personality. And I think Jamie really makes sure she has uh, folks there that really bring that love and care into the into the kiddo's life. And you know, I talked to again some of the parents just the, their kiddos are like, "We're going to school," and they're so excited, and it's really um, rewarding to hear that. It just it blows me away. So, uh, uh, you, know, you know, President Peterson, I wish, I wish that we could offer tours right now. Of course, we're not allowing anybody that is, uh, uh, we're just not allowing anybody to come into our, our children, our, our Learn Center. However, um, when we say it's a state of the art, it truly is a state of the art uh, childcare facility. And when you walk through it, it it uh, it just feels very comfortable and warm and welcoming, and uh, and very very sanitized and clean yet, you know. And so sometimes those don't always go hand in hand, where it kind of it doesn't feel institutionalized. It, it feels very warm and welcoming, and uh, yet it's very it's a very clean and 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 just crisp, you know. And I, I wish uh, I wish we could do uh, tours, or I can't wait for the time that we could start opening it up for the community to be to be offering some tours of our of our facility there. You know, I couldn't agree more. Um, and that's really across the board with our businesses. You know, we we've taken this pandemic really seriously. We worked really hard to make sure our employees, uh, even when we, at the beginning, sent everybody home, you know, in the economic development area, ooh, these are for-profit businesses. We took a risk and said, hey, we're going to pay our staff no matter what. But our staff also really wanted to be working. And so, you know, we followed the CDC guidelines, CDJ guidelines, state guidelines. And I think we've taken... Um, extreme precaution but we've been reopening and uh you know that's something i think that's important but we want to welcome people back into our space especially as the vaccinations have happened you know and we it's been pretty exciting for me i've toured senators through our spaces you know people are really upholding us for what we're doing and and i don't mean to sound like i'm patting ourselves on the back but i guess i am because i'm really proud of our team you know, um, I, I think we can really change lives. And uh, and I think that, you know, employment and feelings of self-worth, I, I think, go hand in hand. And, you know, I look at Cal and his crew, man, nobody takes more pride in their work than Cal does. I mean, he will bust his back to deliver the best, cleanest, best looking vehicle back to our clients. It's I've literally been present where clients picked up their vehicles and were almost in tears. They didn't even think it could be done. And uh, that's, I think it's phenomenal. So you can hear my pride, obviously. Um, Will, is Learn accepting applications or is there, is there still a wait list? Well, there's a wait list, but, but I think with every childcare facility or <clears throat> certainly in Juneau, um, there's, there's always a wait list and we're always accepting applications, but um, we are still taking applications. Uh, as I said, we're, we're really wanting to open up to capacity just as soon as we can. We're doing it safely. We're doing it in, in stages um, and we're doing it cautiously. And, uh, but you can definitely go and find out more about how just to, 
to apply for, for getting your child onto the wait list is at learn www.learnjuno.com or you can call uh, 907-463-7776. Great, thanks for that. And thanks for the you know update and, and introducing Learn to us because it's just tremendously exciting. You know, with the release of the vaccine and the most recent local and national guidelines, what will the reopening of our tribal businesses look like? What kinds of safety measures are being implemented to keep our businesses operational and and, and to make sure that safety is always a priority. I, I guess I'll, I'll give it a, Jody would probably get a lot more detail into this, but just from a, a 30,000 foot level um, for everybody, one of the things that we do at all of our businesses is ensure social distancing. You know, we make sure that our staff are, are keeping well distanced from them and as well as their, our customers. Uh, they're masked, there's consistent and constant hand washing and not just in our enterprises, but through all of our tribal facilities, we, we have regular multiple times a day uh, uh, cleaning staff that goes through and sanitizes all commonly touched areas. And so um, there is just a consistent sanitizing of all of our facilities, of all of our business areas. And we just made sure, you know, when this pandemic was, was at its peak, um, we, our enterprises still remained open, but we, we, we modified it. And there's a constant modification, right? As things relax, the vaccinations are getting more frequent. Things are relaxing. We, for example, over at, uh, at our, our uh, Sacred Grounds Cafe, we now have walk-in and pickup of coffee orders inside. We, uh, we remodeled our front of our, our cafe over the winter or last fall or uh, last summer, actually, to, to have a pickup window on the outside by the sidewalk. Now we've, things are relaxing. They're able to, again, come in and pick up coffees inside. Um, you know, we were only doing appointments uh, set up over the telephone for, or, or the internet for our, our sacred shine. Um, now folks can, can pull up and, and our staff will meet them outside of our facility, of course, and, and maintain that distance, but be able to, to negotiate with them a, a timing for when they can get their vehicles in. Um, there's just a, a number of things that we're, we're staying fluid on as, as our methods of keeping our customers safe as well as our, our staff. Sure. You know, I, I've been immensely proud of that. You know, we've taken the pandemic seriously. We're, we, we're prioritizing the safety of our customers, our clients, our, our friends and neighbors, really, and making sure that we prioritize the, the safety and well-being of, of our staff too. Jody, do you want to add to that? Yeah, if I could just add a little bit. Um, I know at Learn, the child care center, she has been requiring staff to do COVID testing every other week uh, just to ensure that the staff and the children are safe over there. We were doing that as well. For quite some time, we we shifted our focus over to if somebody does um, exhibit any symptoms or call in sick, um, we're offering rapid testing for our staff, and we haven't had to do that recently. But um, uh, the other thing is the generous leave policy that the tribe has been offering for our staff has has really allowed us to operate as safely as possible. So me, myself, I feel really lucky to have worked for the tribe through this pandemic. Our staff um, offered administrative leave if they couldn't find childcare. We had the most generous policy in the state just to make sure everybody, our clients and our customers and our employees were as safe as possible. You know, I appreciate you um, mentioning that, Jody. To me, that's what sets tribes apart, right? We, we need to operate from the set of tribal values. And sometimes that means uh, you just have to put people first and, and business second. And I think while we always want to strive to deliver the best, you can't do it if we don't take care of our, our people. And, and so um, it's been really rewarding to be the leader of the tribe during this time. And, have an executive council who fully endorses that. Um, I've, I've felt really blessed by our executive council. Um, they've really um, backed up everything that we've done. And I think the tribe, you know, I've had, you know, even here in Juneau, the mayor 
call me and say, gosh, you guys seem to be ahead of the game and doing really good things. And, you know, I think it comes from operating from our tribal values and you were not perfect. We don't get everything right. And I'm sure, you know, there were probably glitches and all that, but, you know, we, we wanted um, the safety to be paramount in our decision-making and holding our folks up. And I, I feel really good about that. And it's nice to hear that folks recognize that's what, what's happening. So, and I know you're a manager, so you have to kind of, you know, be on both sides of it with staff and with administration, but it, it's no small task. And I, I want to recognize and thank you, Jody, for, you know, I think uh, I've watched you since you started with the tribe and your leadership has grown leaps and bounds and, and you're really, you lead with those values and that's something I, I really appreciate. Um, are there opportunities for employment within our um, enterprises right now and that the restrictions have um, kind of been lifting? I, I, I would think so, but and if so, how can people apply? We have so many opportunities for our employment right now and I'm just gonna cut Will off, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, and at the tribe in general, I believe last time I looked, we had over 40 positions open on, if you just Google Clink It and Hide the Jobs, you can click on that link and you'll see all the links for everything that's available. Um, at the enterprises, we're hiring event technician at the EP hall, um, prep cook and dishwasher, and a catering and courier driver for smokehouse catering. Uh, we need a few baristas at Sacred Grounds. We're also recruiting for a cafe manager. Sounds like some real opportunity then actually, you know, um, and this is one lunchtime chat and we only actually covered a couple of our businesses. I, I'm going to invite Will back to do another one soon because I want to talk about our construction company, you know, and, and some of these other things that we're doing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been pretty phenomenal to see. So, yeah. Um, Anyhow, okay, are there any other upcoming events or developments that any of you'd like to share? We have a lot of plans for our enterprises that we have. And, you know, you mentioned Southeast General Contractors. You know, we have a number of opportunities that we'd like to take advantage of uh, with that. Uh, with the tribe, we have a number of in-house jobs that we'll be doing with them. And I'm not gonna go ahead and get too much into Southeast General Contractors other than to say that um, uh, through the Business and Economic Development Department, through the enterprises of the tribe, we have a tremendous amount of opportunities. We have a lot of areas of growth. Um, we have a lot of opportunities out there for current staff to continue to get training as well as just some other things that we're working on. Uh, as some of those in the Juno area, are probably well aware of is, is that we will be selling fireworks again this year. And uh, we're awaiting those fireworks to be coming back uh, or to get to us that we've ordered. Um, fireworks are tough to get this year. They're not like in previous years, as you can imagine with everything that's going on um, with, you know, with shipping and with tariffs and everything else like that, getting fireworks is, is not an easy task, but we were managed through some tenacity of some of our staff to go ahead and secure um, fireworks uh, comparable to what we've done last year uh, as far as volume. And so we're excited to have that uh, happening this year. We'll probably be bringing on some temporary staff and temporary hires for that opportunity as well. And um, again, I, we're always looking for, for great staff, people who have a dedication to be working for our people um, and to, to be working for their tribe and, and serving the general public, but making a difference among our own people. And, and that's what's exciting about operating a tribal enterprises. And um, it's not always easy because sometimes it's hard to, to hold our own people to a, to a set standard. It's hard to, to make sure that they know that this is a standard that we're setting that is, is a high bar, but our people always reach up to that. And, and that's one of the things that we've really worked on in our training and professional development of our people. Uh, Cal is a prime example of that. Some of our other leaders, Jody holds, holds our staff to a high standards. I, Ernie Bernhardt over at Southeast General Contractors and, 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 and our administrative staff all are on board for holding our staff accountable and to a higher standard, not because 
uh, we want to look better than everybody else, but because that's 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 a part of our tribal values is is having integrity and 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 a strong work ethic. And so it is something that we've been really continually to coach our staff on and, and they're meeting the challenge. And, and right now I'll use this as an example. We see a tremendous change and our difference um, with the current barista staff that we have that they're they're showing up, they're happy, their customer services is 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 a, is is incredible and, and the quality of coffee is in, increasing. And and uh, over at Southeast General Contractors, for example, we have nearly 100% higher over there. And uh, the work that those gentlemen do there and the ladies over there as well is just, uh, it's incredible. And so I can't say enough of how happy I am with all of our enterprises from our courier drivers to our chefs, to our cooks, to our technicians that work in the EP hall. Everybody is just busting their hump and, and trying to work and live their jobs up to a high standard. You know, one of the things that I, I always think for our employees is that at every level, they're, they're the representation to the public of who the tribe is. And I couldn't be prouder by that representation, you know, sitting in front of me, you know, Jody, Cal, Jared, uh, Chef, you know, Bree says all the way, you know, across the board. You know, one of our unspoken heroes is uh, Jennifer Olson. She works there and man, she gives um, 110% every single day. And, you know, I just couldn't be prouder of the staff like that. And I think, yeah, you know, that's what I hope and pray for when when our staff represent us. And we, we have a lot to be proud of. And, you know, we're empowering our own people and that's the mission of the tribe. And that's, I think when you take the time to invest in our people, we get the best reward and return on that investment. So it's exciting. I think economic sovereignty is something I preach a lot about in my speeches and, and this is it, right? I, I really want to thank you, uh, panel, uh, Will, Jody, Cal, for joining us today and sharing. I'm going to go ahead and turn to some comments that we've received from our viewers. And uh, hopefully I never get names wrong. If I do, apologize. Uh, from Simona Lundy, for the elder discount, starting at what age? What, what is an elder to get the discount? Jody, do you know that? Oh, gosh. I, I, I mean, I don't want to get in trouble with any aunties. So, I mean, <laughs> but I'll 65 about. But um, we we sometimes let the staff use their best judgment there. <laughs> I, I will say I don't think we ask for an identity. Just uh, we'll apply it, and we don't suggest you you look old. <laughs> but uh, I think if you go in for the you know a more expensive thing like a car detail, you might need to probably show your ID, just because of, you know are are pretty spendy. But you know we we try to honor all of our our uh, elders in, in any way we can. Um, from Sue Ann Humble, would virtual tours be possible in the near future? You know, Sue Ann, I think that's an excellent idea. In fact, early on when we were first opening up like our sacred ground, I'd actually just went Facebook Live myself and walked through and I got some of the most views ever by doing that. I think that's probably a great idea, Jody. Uh, maybe just occasionally do some Facebook Live virtual tours of some of our businesses. I think we have a lot to be proud of, and we have citizens all across the world that they, they want to know what we're doing back home and in the homelands, and so I think that's a great idea, Sam. Um, from Betsy Davy, is Learn somewhere to Head Start? I wanted to enroll my daughter, but she's only 20 months. Um, it, it's similar in that they do have kind of curriculum and they do learning activities with the students, but it's more, it is a classic uh, daycare. So we take, uh, I, I don't know if it's quite newborn, but you know, certainly we have babies there that are only a couple months old all the way up. So yeah, um, you know, reach out. I think Will shared that information, www.learnjuno.com and, and, and see, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. And they do have an educational component that they just do. And I, I think that's a real benefit too. You know, they're doing learning activities and 
they do a lot of social activities. These are all things that are kind of in the, um, you know, we're not just making stuff up. It's actually kind of in the, um, like, national centers for child care. We learn a lot of these things and, and do them. So they're, I think, children who have social interaction prove to be uh, higher performers through life. And, and so, you know, we know Head Start really gives the best start. And so we're following that model within our learn. From Edna Charlie, does profits go into a general fund? Well, the great thing about why we're doing this is unrestricted profits. We can use however we want. Um, and the great thing there is we're really trying to meet our citizens where they're at. One of the problems we have is a lot of the money that we get, a lot of people think we get money based on enrollment. and we really don't in the conventional sense. It's more about a geographic area and the enrollment within the geographic area. So a lot of times folks that might live in the lower 48 or elsewhere want some kind of service or need help. And we've had to tell them, sorry, you're not in the service area. We're trying to retire that um, word service area. And through this economic sovereignty, making our own money unrestricted funds that we can use to serve citizens wherever they are and you know that's something our executive council our delegation is extremely um passionate about i'm excited to share that we just opened an office in seattle uh, we have an ICWA attorney and some caseworkers there and we'll be expanding services as we can uh, in October, we'll be opening an office in Anchorage, and we'll be expanding services there. And the next year, we're going to be opening an office in California. And the, the reason why, and people may or may not understand, is we want to meet our citizens where they're at. You're Quinket and Haida, wherever you live. Um, we're born Quinket and Haida, and we deserve to um, see services tied to belonging to Quinket and Haida. And so, Economic sovereignty, these enterprises is where we start with that, but we're going to grow it and, and expand. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, Eileen Osman, is all of TH open for business now, like 477 or Central Council? We've been open for business through the whole pandemic. Um, we have had people working from home, but we've still been carrying on uh, the business of the tribe. <clears throat> One of the things that I hear quite often is that folks call and they can't get a hold of anybody and nobody returns calls. And, and um, you know, it's been frustrating. And one of the things that we found out is, you know, quite a few number of years ago, we went to an automated phone system thinking that I think the intention was to improve service and that it would be more convenient. Um, we're, we're ditching that and we're bringing back live operators and uh, our citizens deserve to hear a voice, get an answer, be directed to what they need. And so we're changing that. We're really, I'm really upset that our citizens have had to deal with a, a system that really didn't work for them and left them more frustrated than when they started trying to get a hold of us. So we, we hear you loud and clear on those issues to our citizens and we're making that change. Um, from Gary Musis, uh, when I bring my car for detailing, do you have a comfortable place for me to wait or will you take me home? Cal, do you want to answer that? Uh, well, I got to set up uh, um, the waiting room. We, got, we had couches and everything. We had to kind of put everything to the side in a way with this whole pandemic. But now that we are, our doors are open and everything, that's something I'm probably going to have to talk to Jody and Will about. Great. Uh, to the second part of that question, our staff will pick up your car from your home if you like us to, or we will give you a ride home and then pick you up again. Um, we're, we're very flexible in that. So, yeah. Um, from Another from Eileen Oseman. So the fireworks are not illegal. No, they are not. Um, so we are uh, permitted, we're, we're licensed, we have insurance, we're good to go. So um, another question from Eileen Oseman, do the daycare have to wear face masks 
staff and kids. And Will or Jody want to tackle that one? So um, our staff are wearing masks. Um, I don't believe, um, and I could be wrong, and Jamie probably uh, will, will, will correct me um, sternly after this if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't believe our children that are, are in there are masked. However, the staff are masked um, throughout the day. Okay. We'll try to find the exact answer for that and post it um, in the comments of this. And then the last question uh, from Levina Adams. Funds for disabled elders, et cetera, medical equipment or travel. Um, we do have some programs, our um, TVR program, which is a tribal vocational rehabilitation program may be able to help. Um, there's also other programs out there. Um, Search um, has a Healing Hands uh, Foundation and others, but you know what, if you call us, we may not be able to help you, but we may be able to point you in the right direction. All right, well, that concludes all of our um, questions. And we, uh, Sam just shared with me the door prize, or Shannon did, sorry, Shannon, uh, door prize winners this week for those who uh, liked the um, conversation. Uh, Hydro Flask is Marjorie Elizabeth. The blueberry Picking Bucket is Anthony James. And the Sacred Sign Hoodie is Mabel Lee. So if Marjorie Elizabeth, Anthony James, and Mabel Lee will private message uh, this our page with your mailing addresses, we'll get those out to you right away. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, our staff for arranging this, our communication staff, uh, Shannon and Sam do a phenomenal job. We really enjoy these lunchtime chats. It's a great opportunity to interact uh, with our citizens, meet you where you're at, sharing information and, and making sure you know of the latest going on at the tribe. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again at our next lunchtime chat and we'll be talking to you soon. I'll be well. Have a great day.